We begin with evening news with this breaking news here from the Southwest Freeway. Most of the main lanes here are closed near Harwin, while crews here finish cleaning up a raw sewage spill from an overturned truck. Now, this is what it looked like from Sky Eye during the 6 o'clock rush hour. Oh, this has been such a disaster. As of 7 o'clock tonight, it is still closed with traffic only getting by on one lane. It is expected to take until about 7.30 to clean it all up. Here's ABC 13's Alisa Rivas with a look at how to get around all of this, Alisa. Alona, did you hear that deep sigh? It's just so tough to watch everybody sit in traffic when I know you've got big plans for Valentine's Day and a long holiday weekend, but they are trying to get through and finish this up, and we are in the home stretch here. This is the Southwest Freeway outbound at Harwin, just one lane of traffic getting by, and we look at the map and see where all the backup is. Traffic slow, just moving at about 20 miles per hour. If you do end up on the Southwest Freeway outbound toward the West Loop, that is what you'll be facing. And your alternate routes are West Park Tollway, US 90, and I-10. But you can see from our map that those are definitely busy as well. Inside the loop, you've got things in the orange, so not quite moving bumper to bumper in the red, but still very busy tonight in the southwest quadrant inside the West Loop. We're not only busy here in this location, but starting at 9 o'clock tonight, we've got a lot of weekend closures as well, and we want to track all of it for you. We're doing so at abc13.com slash traffic. It is live traffic data for you 24 7. All right, Elisa, thank you very much. Well, this is a really tough story. Yeah. A vigil got underway after 6 o'clock tonight for a beloved gospel singer who was killed in a crash this morning. Dr. Latanya Earl was well known in the Baptist and gospel communities. ABC 13's Micah Hatfield has more. Right now, there are dozens of people inside of the church at Bethel's family praying together and mourning the loss of Dr. Latanya Earl. I sat down with the senior pastor today. He tells me her death is the biggest loss to the church since it opened 25 years ago. Tanya Earl is a pastor's greatest gift to the ministry. It wasn't the news anyone expected or wanted to get, to say the least. The woman behind the powerful voice that led worship at the church at Bethel's family for the last 15 years is gone. I'm typically in the office keeping the joy, the laughter, but today came in, it was solemn. Pastor Walter August Jr. got the call from Dr. Latanya Earl's husband early this morning. After dropping her husband off at work, deputies say she was hit head on by 19 year old Selvin Maldonado Palacios. Apparently he was driving over concrete that had just been spilled from a cement mixer truck on Old Umble Road and swerved over the median. Both Earl and Palacios were killed. We believe in living our best life to the fullest. We don't major in minor things. Uh, we keep our focus on serving and loving and taking care, and that's what she was doing. Earl had been with the church for 15 years, serving as their director of worship and creative arts. She was a presence in the church that everyone knew and loved. She has a servant heart. Uh, one of the easiest things to remember her by is just her natural smile. The concrete was spilled from a truck belonging to Lattimore Materials out of Addison, Texas. They issued the statement to us saying in part, safety is a top priority for the company and they express their condolences to the families of the drivers killed. They say they're cooperating with the authorities and have no further comment right now. In Southwest Houston, Micah Hatfield, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Micah, thanks. Meanwhile, in Katy, students there at Maid Creek Junior High were apparently taking apart an old cell phone in the cafeteria when the battery suddenly started to smoke. Well, the Harris County Sheriff's Office says that battery got hot, but no one was seriously burned. Katy ISD now saying 10 students were taken to the hospital for smoke inhalation. Well, two vehicles collided at an intersection on the Southwest Freeway. One of them, a Mercedes SUV. SUV rolled down the embankment, stopping short of the main lanes. The tow truck driver had to lift the vehicle out of the embankment. One person was hurt. Police believe that one of the drivers ran a red light. And we're taking a closer look at how HISD is keeping its students safe on the school bus. Now, of course, this comes after two fires on HISD buses in the last few weeks. Yes, so we are digging into the records to see how big this problem really is and to find out what's being done about it. ABC 13 Stephen Romo has more. Yeah, after seeing that bus fire situation a couple weeks back and then the very next day, a bus smoking heavily on 610. A lot of people were concerned. We looked into those problems to find out just how often these types of problems are happening. 
These images are hard to forget. It was alarming. A bus fire a few weeks back. Four people were inside when it started. They made it out safely before the bus was left a smoldering shell. That shouldn't happen, not on a bus. The next day, this happened. A bus smoking so bad, a viewer who sent this to us said it stopped traffic on 610. No injuries reported here either. That made us ask HISD how often these bus fire or smoking incidents are happening. Documents show there were 78 reports in 2018, 67 in 2019. HISD told us about five so far this year, but with two we covered over the past few weeks, that's seven for 2020 so far, a total of 152 in just over two years. We spoke with a woman who says she worked as an HISD bus driver for about two years. She asked us not to reveal her identity. She says she left that job over stress about bus problems. Once I was on the inside and saw what really happened and how they really don't maintain those buses like they should, it's, it's concerning for me. Doug Walter is a bus specialist at Cassell Automotive. They don't work for HISD, but service many other buses. I don't want to be driving next to a school bus that a part is going to fall off. Problems start when buses begin to age. HISD said in a statement, half its fleet is over 12 years old. A third of its fleet is over 15. Walter also points out that even though bus smoking and fire incidents are alarming, injuries from them are pretty rare. Fires are more common in actual passenger cars. Still, not everyone is reassured. I know from my experience personally, I would not let my kids ride the bus. And that statement from HISD also points to the age of the buses as a problem, something else that we're going to continue to look into. You can read their full statement online at abc13.com. Stephen Romo, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. All right, Stephen, thank you. Well, let's get a quick check on the forecast. Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Travis Herzog here with the update, Travis. All right, going out this evening, temperatures falling pretty quickly down through the 40s, and by tomorrow morning, we start off at 39 degrees, a chilly start to what ends up being a fairly mild finish to the weekend. We'll be at 65 for a high on Saturday. Cloud cover returns, but we've taken the rain chance completely out. There could be a stray shower late Saturday night or before sunrise on Sunday, but it whips off quickly to the east, uh, I should say zips off quickly to the east into Louisiana. We'll start off in the mid-50s on Sunday morning with highs into the mid-70s. Now, north of I-10, still possible we get into frost territory, which is generally when the air temperature measured six feet above the ground gets to about 36 degrees. When that happens at ground level, it's usually uh, cold enough to produce some frost. Now, south of Houston down 288 into Pearland and Angleton, lows of 42, down to 45 into Galveston, a low tonight of 52 degrees. Now, fast forward to Monday after a nice weekend, we got some changing weather on the way. So it's very warm and humid on Monday as the south breeze picks up ahead of our next strong cold front, which dives into southeast Texas on Tuesday, followed by rain and then more rain. It's one of those weather systems where you get most of the rain after the cold front. So Pacific moisture will ride over the top of the cold air, and that's going to lead to a chilly, cloudy, damp weather Wednesday into Thursday with rain off and on and cold enough still in West Texas where we think that there could be some snow showers. But for us here in Southeast Texas, it's all the cold rain. Then after the mess clears out starting Friday into Saturday, the temperatures get colder in the morning and it's possible that we could have another round of frost or light freeze north of Houston. So be aware of that if you're tempted to put some plants in the ground on this mild weekend ahead. So great weather Saturday, Sunday for President's Day, much warmer, high near 80, 30% chance of rain. The cold front arrives on Tuesday. The temperatures on Tuesday highly dependent upon the exact timing of the front, which is difficult to pin down this far. If it comes in earlier in the day, these numbers will go down. If it comes in later in the day, they'll go up. But either way, it turns cold, cloudy and wet for Wednesday and Thursday. After the clouds and the rain clear out, we get some lows in the 30s with highs back into the 60s as we get into next weekend. All right, Travis, thank you. We're taking a closer look at why Houston is getting the XFL championship game. Commissioner Oliver Luck dropping by the midday today to talk about the Roughnecks, the XFL, and why Houston is home to the big game. Yes, he told our own Joe Gleason the decision was based on the way that Houston has gotten excited for championships in the past. Examples like previous Super Bowls, NCAA Final Fours, and more. You can watch that full interview on ABC13.com and, of course, on our news app. And the Astros say they're ready to just move on from all of this despite comments from other players around the league. Today, National League MVP Cody Bellinger said that Astros' Thursday apology was, quote, weak, and that Jose Altuve stole the title of MVP in 2017. Well, that was rough. Yesterday, the team publicly apologized for the first time while saying that the sign-stealing scheme 
did not impact the outcome of the 2017 World Series oh. win. All right, let's end the evening news with some good news here. Shall we? <laughs> it's always nice to do that. First off, a man was reunited with his dog after his dog went missing when his car was stolen. You might remember hearing about this one. That dog was in his car that was running outside of his apartment complex, and somebody took off with it while Frida, the golden doodle, was inside. After our story aired yesterday, an ABC 13 viewer says Frida showed up at their home. They were able to return her safe to her owner. Oh, love that. All right, look at this. One Houston couple saying, I do at a Whataburger. Vivian and Colton were one of the couples who won Whataburger's What a Wedding contest. Yeah, they say this is fitting because they met at a Whataburger. So the love <laughs> is in the air. That is good. Yes. Great story to end here on this Valentine's Put night. Put an onion ring on it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you like it, then you should have put an onion ring on <laughs> Gonna do it for us. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Be sure to join us tonight on the news at 10 o'clock on ABC 13. Happy Valentine's Day, friends. Come on. <laughs> it's a good life. If you like it, should have put an onion <laughs> ring on it. <laughs>